As opening remark, I'll just give a few indications of what has been highlighted in the budget. Broadly, I think the four emphasis points are on empowering women, giving a lot more attention to the SHG groups which are in the rural areas, trying to scale them up, give them the opportunity to brand and produce and also market their products in a far more uh, scaled up and professional manner. Emphasis on tourism and training of youth for readying themselves for tourism, specific action for 50 destinations where comprehensive tourism action plans will be introduced. Then what is being called as PM Vikas, looking at Vishwakarma, people who create things, make things out of their hands using tools. In some states they are called Vishwakarmas, in some other states some castes are referred to as Vishwakarma, but what we mean here is to cover all those artisans and craftspeople who do things with their hands using some tools, so not specifically only to some particular communities, but to all who create uh, the soft power of India through their uh, craftsmanship. Then uh, the four is green growth, the fourth one, which is uh, in every sphere of life, we have policy interventions and enabling provisions made so that India moves fast on the transition to renewable energy. The investments made for hydrogen uh, mission, renewable uh, energy transitional uh, facilities which we need, natural gas uh, and also looking at biogas, also evacuation of power from renewable energy sources located in Ladakh to the rest of the country. So those are four highlights which I'd like you to go back to, to see the scale in which we are approaching these issues and the impact that it will have on large sections of India's population. Then, of course, I gave seven priorities, which began with talking about inclusive growth, investments in infrastructure, also reaching the last mile so that those who are still left without a house or a sanitary facility or a road which is reaching them, and so on. So the last mile, reaching the last mile for those who desperately need that kind of a link are all being covered. Then we are also looking at a very futuristic fintech financial sector for which we have brought in uh, some specific ideas. We are looking at also improving the uh, industrialization of this country where people will be trained for Industrial Revolution 4.0, which means they're going to be trained for AI, IoT, using Web3 in other words. So training manpower to ready themselves for industries which are rapidly becoming industrialized in the Web3 context. Then digital economy, unleashing the digital power of India in various walks of life, setting up an artificial intelligence research center, in center for excellence. So all these are in part A. There's a lot of increase in the agriculture credit availability, 20 lakhs being made available for agriculture credit. Also a sub-scheme under the PM Matsya Sampada Yojana, making sure that people living in the coastal areas are going to benefit from it, fishermen are going to benefit from it. Now if largely the part A has looked at these, part B has aimed at rationalizing the customs duties, also making sure personal income tax after a very long time, has had substantial changes which will benefit the middle class. And also because this country has been waiting for direct taxation to be simplified, also waiting for direct taxation to be a lot more easy in compliance, and therefore the 
new taxation regime that we brought in for direct taxation two, three years ago has now got greater incentives, greater attraction, so that people can unhesitatingly move from the old to the new. Of course, we are not compelling anybody. Those who want to remain in old can still remain there for enough justifications that they can have. But the new one, obviously, will be, is now attractive because it gives greater rebate. It also provides for a simplified and smaller slabs, uh, smaller lower rates of uh, taxation and also slabs which are nicely broken down. So with all this, I think the budget, I've not gone into specifics, but I thought as an opening remark, this much will be sufficient to say this is a budget which is beautifully balanced both growth considerations because the capital investment has never before seen double digit investment announcements 10 lakh crore which includes 1.3 lakh crores being given to states is going to give a big leg up for capital investment from government so the balancing that i'm talking about is looking at public sector investments, continuing that good tradition of capital investment in infrastructure, and also attending to MSMEs, because they are the engine of growth. We've given them relief. We have also given them new access. We have extended and widened the emergency credit liquidity guarantee scheme, also given them back their uh, securities, 95% of it, even if they fail to deliver on contractual promises which were during the COVID pandemic. So the balancing is, one, we could sustain the capital infrastructure expenditure from the government. Simultaneously in the private sector, give a lot of push and impetus for the MSME and not forgetting the individuals, the middle class individuals who needed that kind of a tax breaks and relief through taxation. So the large uh, macroeconomic considerations have also been kept in mind. The fiscal consolidation has not been kept in the back burner. We've attended to it. We are respecting the glide path we gave ourselves two budgets ago. Uh, 6.4 this year fiscal deficit and the forthcoming year for which the budget is presented now, 5.9% fiscal deficit. So. Broadly, I leave it at this. I suppose when you ask questions, we can answer the rest. Thank you. Thank you for coming here today. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, Shishir here from Hindu Business Line. Uh, ma'am, my question is that when there is an announcement for 7 lakh rupees under new tax regime, uh, that will no tax to be paid, and then uh, you are talking about rejigging the new tax regime. Does this mean that this is the end of exemptions for various incentives, exemptions for investment and savings? Well, I've already addressed this, I think. We want to make the new tax regime, which is without exemptions, attractive enough for people to think that this will be the best option for them because it gives them better rates. It has, doesn't also, also make the compliance a burdensome exercise. If rates are so low, you're going to benefit net-net by paying lesser tax. Even those exemptions that you would have otherwise gained from would have resulted in probably net amount being the same. So we made this a lot more attractive. But if there are people who still think that being in the exemption regime, which is the old regime, benefits them, they're welcome to continue where they want. But yes. The ultimate interest is to make the simpler regime more attractive. And that is why we've come up with this. Ma'am, uh, uh, firstly, many congratulations at, at, on the fiscal consolidation because I keep asking you that question. But uh, the issue uh, today is about people in terms of, you know, there, there is a big gamble in terms of capital expenditure. Uh, when you do that, does it actually trickle down to the people? Does it create jobs? I, I know you've been doing this for the last two years. Are you sure that this will really trigger off job creation one to, uh, you know, money in the hands of the poor people? 
The second, of course, is about inflation, which again, you like last year, you haven't really uh, touched about it, but you have had the letter from RBI. Uh, your chief economic, uh, economic advisor yesterday says, we are in un uncertain times, but uh, you know, we hope that it will be uh, under the check of four, you know, four to six percent, hopefully the lower band of RBI. What is your uh, you know, answer to both these points? First of all, on the inflation, I think, yeah, you're right in saying RBI wrote a letter and what. But in the meanwhile, you've seen inflation come down, both the CPI and WPI. Action is being taken by the government. We take uh, inflation-related steps as and when things develop in the ground and in response to it. And that has borne result. So inflation is not something which we are looking the other way while it is changing up and down. We have kept attending to it, and as a result, you find the uh, result. On fiscal consolidation, you asked me the question, and I've already explained that we have attended to it with all earnestness, having respected the glide path we gave ourselves earlier. Jobs. Huh? Yeah, yeah. See, first of all, I find it a bit uh, odd you may want to ask this question like this. Capital expenditure. I would have appreciated if you asked me, you said something in the BE, but you have not really exhausted what you uh, put forth. You have not really used it in the ground. It is unfulfilled in the sense targets have not achieved. I would have been happy to answer if that were to be the case. But you are asking me a question about, in the sense you are implying that we have fully utilized what has been kept for um, capital investment. Therefore, it makes me feel odd that you're asking a question of actually have jobs been created or not. When projects are undertaken and money is utilized and that it is utilized is coming through from the budget statement, how would the projects get completed without manpower, without jobs? Not all projects can be completed, even 1% without human intervention. So obviously jobs are happening in the ground. So. Uh, ma'am, uh, I want to ask you, uh, ma'am here. Uh, ma'am, I want to ask you how, what percentage of taxpayers had moved to the new tax regime in the last uh, assessment year? And is there a number that you expect, 50%, uh, 60%, whatever? And number two, ma'am, there's a specific mention for expenditure towards uh, MSMEs. Now, is there an estimate of how much, uh, what, what was the dues that companies had claimed as expenditure and which has not actually been uh, paid to the MSMEs. Sanjay, you want to answer on? On your uh, second question that is on the MSMEs, well, we don't have that data. Certainly, we don't have that data. And it's not, I mean, we don't take that data from uh, uh, the taxpayers in their returns. So that data we will not have. But certainly, you know, we are all aware of this huge uh, problem of timely uh, payments not being made to the MSME. So in that direction, you know, this is uh, certainly a positive step. Coming to your first question on the exemption-less regime, let me say that for companies, the 22% tax regime that we got, 61% of our tax now, the corporate tax, more than 60% is actually coming from the exemption-free tax regime. Individuals' data we will not have, but we are very hopeful that this particular scheme for individual taxpayers, the PIT, I think the majority would prefer, I mean, all of you, if you all do your own calculations, I think uh, majority here would uh, be now wanting to shift irrespective of their incomes and the deductions and exemptions that they claim they would be finding it more attractive to shift to the new tax regime, majority of them. Uh, Ma'am, very good afternoon. Congratulations on a great budget. It's very clean, simple. 
nicely done. Uh, Ma'am, one quick question on CAPEX and one more on, uh, on uh, petroleum subsidy. Uh, Ma'am, your CAPEX for RE is lower actually in terms of the spend as of now. Uh, but the t target is, you know, greatly stepped up for FI24. So what gives the confidence that it will be all utilized? That? CAPEX, CAPEX, uh, RE is lower, ma'am. 7.28 versus slightly lower. Uh, and a big one, big jump uh, for FI24. So what gives the government the confidence that all of it is going to be utilized and well spent? That's one, ma'am. And second, ma'am, on the petroleum front, uh, the LPG subsidy has been kept pretty low. Uh, you had announced certain uh, additional measures last year in May, along with the deep cuts in excise on petrol diesel. So what happens to those announcements regarding LPG subsidy? They have not been uh, rolled over. And plus, ma'am, there is a demand coming in from oil cores now after LPG losses that you have made good by giving them money, that something needs to be done on fuel also. So would the government what consider? the last bit? Something has to be done for who? Uh, Basically, uh, demand coming in from oil cores in terms of ah, oil marketing companies. Yes, cash oh, compensation. The money for which fuel. is now being given is not for that. Not for that, ma'am. So, ma all of it. So, on your first question on capital expenditure. So, yes, the the revised estimates are about 97 percent or 98 percent of the budget estimate. Yes, there is a slight deviation. It's mainly on the state capital expenditure which is falling short of the 1 lakh crore. Actually, the central capital expenditure is going to exceed the budget estimates. State capital expenditure is not expected to reach the 1 lakh crore figure because some portions of the state capital investment scheme have reform conditions. So some states have not been able to meet some of the conditions. Therefore, we expect, I think the figures are there, about 76% of the state capital expenditure scheme is likely to be spent. That's the revised estimate. So the shortfall is actually on the state side, not on the central side, point number one. What gives you the confidence for next year? I think the, if you look at the allocations that have been made, they've made in actually four, the increments are in four clear areas. One, railways. The railways has enough projects to absorb the additional capital expenditures. The second is highways. They have adequate projects running to absorb this capital expenditure. The third is states, 30,000 crores. Now, yes, that uh, there will always be a challenge, but I think the states are gearing up now. This two years of this experiment has helped them to improve their spending capacity. And we are also seeing an uptick in the second half of this year on the state capital expenditure. So I'm reasonably confident that the states will absorb the 1,30,000 that has been provided. And the other big item on the central side is the petroleum uh, capital expenditure, which is for retrofitting of refineries to meet emission standards and pollution standards, and partly for augmenting our strategic reserves. So these, I'm quite confident that we'll meet the uh, expenditure targets. Please. Uh, Tarun Sharma from Z Business. Uh, Ma'am, uh, the disinvestment ka jo target is 65,000 to 50,000 and next year 51,000. So, Ma'am, we can understand that the two private banks, the uh, government banks have privatization and the two insurance companies have privatization, that will happen after 2024. Ke baad hi ho paega. Usse pehle, uh, ho paega, that will not happen before, because Ma'am, the target is uh, doing this. The second question is Sanjay Sir. Se hai. Okay. जैसा कि आपको विदित है कि डिसइन्वेस्टमेंट तो मार्केट कंडीशंस और कई चीजों से निर्भर करता है तो उस हिसाब से जो प्रैक्टिकल और प्रूडेंट टारगेट है वो रखा गया है मैम आई एम मोनिका फ्रॉम द न्यू इंडियन एक्सप्रेस मैम व्हाट वाज द नीड टू लोवर इफेक्टिव टैक्स रेट फॉर हाई इनकम ग्रुप एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम and also tax collection at source has been increased from 5% to 20% or on overseas tour package. So what is the reason behind this massive increase? See, uh, the tour packages are generally taken by people who are, whose effective tax rate is certainly more than 30%. So if we are charging them 20% TDS, I don't think it is high. Uh, we have, uh, our attempt always has been to charge 
TDS at more or less similar rates, if not exactly the same rates. Uh, uh, so that is that answers your uh, question number one. Question number two on, uh, I think you are referring perhaps to surcharge, which has been reduced. Well, our rates, uh, the highest tax rates in our country were amongst the highest, even more than, you know, the developed, some of the developed countries. And so, uh, in any case, you know, it was introduced as an interim measure, and so that has now been reduced, uh, so that the effective tax rate, highest effective tax rate becomes 39%. I'd just like to supplement that. There is a consistent theme, if you see, both on the new tax regime and on the changes uh, that you're seeing in this budget, that the move is towards lower rates, but fewer avoidance measures and exemptions. So if you look at high net worth individuals, there are a number of tax avoidance removal measures in this budget, along with the reduction in surcharge. So if you look at market link debentures, if you look at very high value insurance policies and a few other measures, so the marginal rate is coming down, but some of the devices used predominantly by those in that highest marginal tax rate are also being rationalized. So it's not necessarily a net reduction, it is a reduction from a high marginal rate inducing certain avoidance devices to a lower marginal rate with fewer opportunities to avoid. 74 please. one's mind being part of a political party. But consistent with what we believe, we placed our emphasis and priorities on those. And that's what you've seen in the budget. Madam, my question is to you. I'm Sanjay Sharma, from Lokmat Akbar. Madam, your budget आपके बजट में विपक्ष की तरफ से कोई ज्यादा प्रतिक्रिया नहीं आई है लेकिन इस बजट से महिलाओं को काफी उम्मीदें थी घर की महिलाओं को जो महंगाई से पीड़ित थी रसोई गैस के सिलेंडर के दुगने दामों से पीड़ित थी कहीं ना कहीं आटा आटे से लेकर के रोटी तक सारी चीजें महंगी हो गई है तो क्या इससे आपको लगता है कि कुछ इसमें महंगाई पे भी फर्क पड़ेगा और घर की जो रोटी है जो घर की जो रसोई का जो सामान है उसमें इस पर इस बजट से कुछ फर्क पड़ेगा गवर्नमेंट का निर्णय को देखे होंगे कि गेहूं के लिए मार्केट में रिलीज करने के लिए आदेश हुआ है जिससे गेहूं के दाम कम होने के इतना क्लियर इंडिकेशन है जिससे सीधा घर में रसोई में फर्क पड़ेगा ही पड़ेगा सो so, उसको आप बोलना नहीं है ये नहीं है कि मैं उसके ऊपर कुछ बजट में नहीं बोले मगर बजट से बोलने से पहले एक्शन ही हो गया है ना कि घर की रसोई के लिए गेहूं आटा के लिए मार्केट में रिलीज करने के लिए निर्णय सरकार ऑलरेडी कर चुकी है एक मिनट एक मिनट साथ ही साथ जो है महिला जो है वो भी एक परिवार का सदस्य है तो जो रिलीफ जो इतना टैक्स पर्सनल इनकम टैक्स में दिया गया है वो भी परिवार के पास में और महिला के पास में आएगा उसके हाथ में आएगा जिससे वो अपना घर का खर्चा चला सकती है सो वो भी एक महिला के लिए हमें नहीं देखना चाहिए कि महिला के लिए नहीं है वो भी महिला के लिए एक बेनिफिट है गेहूँ पुरुषों के लिए भी है और महिला के लिए टैक्स भी है <laughs> The fiscal glide path that you have that you have given is 4.5 percent by 2025-26, which may be considered slightly bold. But does it also indicate your confidence in continuing uh, uh, tax buoyancy in the coming years? Somnathan has already answered it. Yes, tax buoyancy, as you saw even yesterday, GST collection uh, figures have come. 
direct taxation buoyancy is also observed in the current year. That is one thing I think uh, to the credit of this team there has been a very robust management of macroeconomics. That certainly bears a impact. So you all of us might talk about this particular step or that particular step but I think together revenue expenditure disinvestment banking all of us together have worked in such a way that where you can earn more through tax avoidance related measures and similarly where you can bring in more people into the tax net you are taking steps similarly prudent ways of effective expenditure without cutting down expenditure committed expenditure or other expenditure are all ways in which you're making money mean more and for every rupee that you spend you get a better, a better set of returns so i think efficient management also has a very big role to play here i just wanted to add uh, to your question um, the estimates in the budget the revenue estimates in the budget do not assume a buoyancy greater than 1 for the coming financial year it assumes a buoyancy of 1 gross taxes are expected to grow by the same 10.5 percent by which we have estimated the GDP gr to grow which is slightly lower than the figure imply implied by the economic survey and uh, therefore we are assuming only a buoyancy of one but if the experience of this year is repeated next year then it may in fact be more than one but we have taken a conservative assumption and I think the the very fact that the commitment to 4.5 percent was reiterated word by word in this budget gives you an indication that we feel that we have the means and the ability to reach that target by 2025-26. I would also point out that many of our expenditure increases are on discretionary spends. We have kept a very tight lid on the irreducible types of expenditure and therefore there is room in the budget both on the revenue side and on the expenditure side for us to reach that uh, fiscal deficit target by 2025-26 and it is not likely that the finance minister has reiterated it in parliament today. Ma'am, Tim C. Jaipuria from CNBC TV 18. Ma'am, uh, I, I have two questions. Firstly, okay, uh, on the TDS reforms, you've come out with two specific reforms. For, uh, one, 20% TDS on foreign investments. Why has this been introduced? Uh, is it to curb the flight of capital or investments which was going outside the country? And secondly, on uh, students who are going outside to study, on that also the TDS has come, to, uh, there's a 5% that has been levied or it has no, been no, no, come, no, no. it that has been is, reduced. There is no change on education or absolutely on, not. That's on, wrong. Your facts but, are wrong. But what happens to the amount that one uh, spends in staying there? Tim as a student first correct the thing which you've said because yours is a very powerful voice and that can spread among your dosts no, 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 and no. that can go out no change has been made for education or health purpose LRS please I hope uh, yeah. my voice is audible much more than Tim C's. Thank you for correcting me, ma'am. But on uh, the foreign capital, on the foreign investment, the TDS of 20%, if you could explain the your, rationale. I, I think this question was asked and I already answered it to say that this is actually coming from income and the income tax rates for those categories of people who are using this LRS to spend, send money outside is much more than 20%. And so they were in any case you know, to pay for the tax. And in case they don't have to pay for the tax, they can always get a refund. It is our impression and there are, there is enough information to indicate that there are quite a lot of people who are able to make these remittances, but whose tax returns are disproportionately low compared to what they send as remittances. Now that means if you don't collect the tax at source, you have to take measures later to catch them. That is much more difficult. This, if you are able to make remittances to invest in a property in Manhattan or in a stock brokerage account in Dubai, or you know, if you are uh, going to take a 30 day tour of the world, almost certainly your effective tax rate will be 20%. So, yes. Uh, 
Um, we have learned from both the economic survey and the RBI report that there's a lot of public investment and private consumption. Are you still happy with the private investment? Are you still expecting it to grow? Or do you think for the moment it is only public investment that will go on? Uh, hi. Yesterday in the press conference, uh, we answered this question and we also had a slide up there in the presentation we made yesterday that private capital investment has been improving every year in the last three years. For example, in the first half of 2021, based on quarterly earnings reports filed by listed companies, the capital expenditure was 2.1 lakh crores, which increased to 2.4 lakh crores in 21-22 in the first half, April to September. And 22-23, it has gone up to 3.3 lakh crores. And then you look at the RBI survey on capacity utilization and investment spending plans of the respondents. There is a very clear sign that many private sector companies are looking to enhance their capital expenditure. So both in terms of intent and in terms of actual spend, private capital investment is showing very clear signs of revival. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, this is Ujjwal Narayan from uh, News Rise. Ma'am, uh, this is your fifth budget and when you started with, in the first budget, uh, you th uh, talk about India reaching to a 5 trillion economy by 2025. So just uh, I wanted to know uh, what is the situation because yesterday CA has uh, put forward another goal post of becoming a 7 trillion economy in next 7 years. So what is happening to that target? This is, that is my simple question. See, we are moving along to achieve our targets, both mine and his. <laughs> we'll achieve, we'll achieve. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, this is Chetan from India Today Group. Ma'am, while calculating the fiscal uh, match for FI24, uh, how did you assume uh, the disruptive variables like the crude prices and, of course, China unlocking and its impact on commodity prices? How uh, What was the uh, benchmark that you were uh, thinking behind the national uh, This is a question that keeps coming every budget, and I keep giving you the same answer that there is no part of the budget mathematics that has a crude price number as an input in any spreadsheet. See, the, the, because there is no direct subsidy on any petroleum product. Unlike the fertilizer price or the, you know, price of the MSP, these are direct impacts on the budget. The petrol price would have an impact only if it triggers some major change in the tax system. Otherwise, the petrol, diesel, oil prices do not directly affect our budgeting. So it is not that there were days, maybe 10, 15 years ago, when there was a lot of subsidy on these commodities. At that time, a crude price assumption was inherent in the budget. Today, there is no inherent crude. The assumption we are making in the budget is only that there will be no subsidies on petrol and diesel and that global prices will be such that there will be no subsidies. What the global price will be, I don't need to make an assumption. So no assumption has been made. And this is a confusion since last year when people referred to what was said in the economic survey as though it was said in the budget itself. The budget didn't say it then, the budget doesn't say it now. I'm Amir Hoon, News Nation. The first question is that when it started, the government said that we will have to drink water better for the water. And there were very big measures in the starting. But today, we are seeing that the government has drunk water better. जनता को खुश देखने के लिए तो क्या ये एक चुनावी बजट है इसको मानती है और पहला ये दूसरा ये कि इनकम टैक्स में जिस तरह से जो छूट की सीमा है जो पहला फेज है आपका जिसमें सात लाख तक की छूट है तो उसमें वो फेज आपको लगता है कि इससे राजस्व पर भार पड़ेगा कितना भार पड़ेगा कोई एस्टीमेट है उसका घोषणा ही कर चुके हैं हम हिडन नहीं रखे सो वो आ गया है थर्टी Uh, 
this is Anuradha from Economic Times. In your budget speech, ma'am, you spoke about the review of financial sector reg regulators. So, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Something? Uh, some of these exercises, when the regulations are brought in, they serve a purpose. Thereafter, the economy changes. So, all the regulators have been doing it as part of their exercise, but uh, there is a time now to take up a uh, comprehensive review and you will recall RBI had formed a committee, they did it in 2020, they came out with a report in 2021. That is an ongoing process and other regulators also will travel in that direction, that their regulations are what the economy needs today, whatever tweaking is required, they will take up that steps. There is their own review, not uh, by them. Ma'am, congratulations on your penultimate budget and Ma'am, am I audible, ma'am? Congratulations on your last full budget and uh, uh, I just wanted to understand, uh, you have mentioned, uh, alluded to um, Banking Regulation Act Amendment and Banking Companies Act Amendment. Is it an indication that this year we'll see privatization on that front, public sector banking front? And uh, if you could also uh, give some, uh, throw some light on what kind of uh, amendment it will uh, undertake apart from, you know, allowing uh, public sector bank for privatization. These measures are for improving the governance of the boards and then uh, investors protection, etc. These are not to do with any disinvestment of the privatization measures. These are the different set of measures. Over a period of time, the things have changed and the Banking Regulation Act also fall in line, or not fall in line, has to be aligned with the present day needs, how, what the directors are, who can be there, what their terms are going to be. So those kind of amendments are there. And one component, of course, is on the investors' uh, production areas as well. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Rima Sharma from Potibimba Life. Uh, my question, uh, uh, yeah, my, my question is regarding MSME sector in the northeast, uh, northeast, especially in Assam. During pandemic, that Assam handloom sector and bamboo sector badly affected. Uh, many artisans forced to close their work. So, uh, in your uh, budget, you have seen okay, something MSME sector. You have given some relief and widen the uh, possibilities. So, as Gamusa also getting GI tag this time. So, but do you have any uh, uh, special relief for the Assam and Northeastern artisans, especially in the handloom sector and bamboo sector? In the last year's budget itself, I think for sustaining livelihoods and also making sure that the Northeast livelihoods are attended to, we came up with a specific program called PM Divine for the development of Northeast. Um, and that was executed through the Northeastern Council. So that program continues and that will take care of livelihood related, whether it is in the weavers or in any other such community. Uh, but uh, after getting the GI take in the Gamusha, do you have any special uh, package for the encourage uh, to the handloom sector? So that is uh, something which the state government will have to tag along with the existing programs, either through the handicrafts, <laughs> pro either through the handicrafts program, the artisan and other things that we are coming up with, for which the rules will come out. Either they can use it, or the textile ministries. I'm sure they can always. Uh, find out from the uh, textile ministry for GI tagged Gamusha, uh, they can ask for a, a dispensation. So this is possible, but that is for the state government to interact with the respective so, ministries. Uh, can you uh, a little bit elaborate what kind of... I uh, can't elaborate you more, ma'am. You what should kind of ask the state government to deal with it for the respective no, no, ministry. Uh, in your budget relief, what kind of relief you have given? Uh, can you a little bit uh, elaborate it? In my yeah. budget relief... Uh, the MSME sector for MSME yeah. or for Gamusha or for GI, what are you asking? 
I will send you some information. Ma'am, let us move on with other questions. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, Aru from Business Standard. Ma'am, uh, in this year's fiscal policy statement also, you are speaking about unprecedented global headwinds and challenges. And again, you have not given a uh, forecast for the two succeeding years, in this case, FY24, 25 and 25, 26. Although you have an internal uh, consolidation roadmap. So are we going to see this, this as a new normal where you are not amending the FRBM Act again and you are not giving two succeeding years forecast, but, gonna, but you will continue having an internal roadmap? Yeah. Yeah, but you're not amending for the third consecutive year, you're not amending the FRBM Act and you're not giving two succeeding years targets. Yeah, but we have given a glide path and we are every budget stating whether we are aligning with the glide path given or not, right? So that pandemic was the new normal for two years, hasn't it been? Hi, I'm Siddharth from Money Control here. Uh, the gross borrowing number is 15.4 lakh crores. Net is uh, the gross borrowing is 15.4 lakh. Net is 11.8 lakh. Uh, especially with po real interest, real interest rates returning to positive territory and territory in the last few months with the RBI hiking rates. Do you see borrowing costs for companies rising, uh, especially uh, and po perhaps the government crowding out the private sector, and could that impact private investments? So uh, I think the, the question of crowding out, actually the increase in borrowing over the previous year is 8%. The economy has grown at a nominal rate of 15% uh, over the same period. So this is a level of borrowing which I think will not lead to any incremental crowding out. In fact, as a percentage of the size of the nominal economy, the total gross borrowing is actually going to be lower in 23-24 than in 22-23. So incremental crowding out, I think, is not uh, a significant issue. And that, I do not think, will lead to any impact on borrowing costs in the private sector. Uh, this is uh, retreating that point that expect the required borrowings for the next year are of the same order what they are in the current year. Of course, the size of the economy has gone up. So it is not that the more money is being taken out of the savings which are available into the economy. So we don't see that impacting because it is of the same order. And even if you go two years back and just increase by nominal rates, uh, the borrowings are, net borrowings are of the same order. In, in, in fact, they are only, they are less than 2% more than the actuals. The figures stated were, I think, for the B. But actually, it will be only, you know, estimates are that it will be less than 2%. Economy is nominally expected to grow at more than 10.5%. Point, at, at so, I mean, that should answer your question. Ma'am, Ishwarya Paliwal from India Today. Ma'am, opposition parties have been calling this Nilbata Sanata not good enough budget. Your comments? I don't follow your Hindi. Would you say that again? Ma'am, they said not good enough. Most of the opposition parties for the budget. Ma'am, your comment reasons, on that? reasons, if I may know? Not good enough for what reasons, ma'am? If you would like to repeat their words. They have said, ma'am, most of the no, political I'm parties. I'm saying if you could please repeat their words and say not good enough for what reasons per se? They said nothing for the, uh, nothing they said for? Nothing, in, nothing much for the middle class. What? Most of the, yeah, this is what those parties. <laughs> ma'am, do you believe, do you believe uh, India will remain a bright spot, ma'am? Please do. Next question, please. Ma'am, my name is Mukesh and I work for Newsrise. Just wanted to know, is there a component of green bonds in the... Uh, does it contain green bonds also? I mean, what Sorry. would be the component of green bonds? Sovereign Repeat green bonds. your question, please. Me. So basically, uh, in this overall gross borrowing that we have for the year, uh, w what component of that would be in form of green bonds? See, for the current year of $2 billion, one installment has already been done uh, one week back, another one will be done a week later. So for the next, and the monies which we are going to raise now through these bonds, $2 billion will be used for the projects which have been identified. And if those projects require in the pipeline that they require more money, then we will 
raise money through the green bonds, but that will be part of, of the overall borrowings which have been suggested. But so what can we target? Pardon? What is the no, there is no, no. there is no target for green bonds for next year. It is something which will evolve as the year goes on. Uh, Ma'am, this is Primangshu from Anandavaya Patrika. Uh, you have said that your capital expenditure has reached uh, your capital expenditure has reached uh, 10 lakh crore, but the interest payment expenditure that is also that has also reached 10 lakh crore, and the interest payment burden it is almost 40 percent of the revenue received. So, do you think it is a matter of concern for? It is always desirable for a government to have its interest payments as low as possible. Uh, but you are aware of the reasons for which government had to borrow a lot over the last three years. And all that I can say is the borrowings have been used very constructively towards growth inducing investments and have not been frittered away on unproductive expenditure. Therefore, if the economy keeps growing at the rate that it has started to grow at now, then this is unlikely to be an unsustainable debt burden. We are quite confident that the interest burden will gradually come down as the GDP keeps growing. And to sustain that growth, the quality of expenditure, the quality of government expenditure is increasing. The revenue deficit is falling even faster than the fiscal deficit. So we are actually seeing an improvement in the quality of public expenditure, which will enable us to sustain this higher interest burden, which is a result of history, two years of COVID where the entire globe has seen an increase in interest burden in all governments all over the world. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, this is Karishma here from Business Today Television. Congratulations to you and everybody for yet another successful budget. Ma'am, you did talk about simplification um, of the tax regime. So my question is, uh, on the capital gains tax regime that was also expected. It was not a part of the budget announcement, but uh, it's expected that a simplification could be done in the uh, coming months. Is that something on the cards? And also, ma'am, secondly, no big bang announcements on cryptocurrency in this budget. Uh, what is the kind of update with the consultation paper that had to be submitted also to the FSDC? For your question, first question, I have no answer because it's your expectation. You kept about it for the last few months, and then you want me to answer on that. But the revenue oh, have they been? They've not told me about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> to say now. That's all right, but even then, there's nothing to say now. मैम मैं आलोक सीएनबीसी आवाज से हूं सर मैम मेरा सवाल यह है कि जो टीडीएस को लेकर क्लेरिफिकेशन आई हैं और उसमें खास तौर से जो 10000 का जो थ्रेशोल्ड लिमिट है कई सारी चीजों पर खत्म कर दिया गया है खास तौर से ऑनलाइन गेमिंग को लेकर इसके पीछे क्या रीजन है ऑनलाइन गेमिंग को लेकर अभी भी क्या सरकार काफी कॉन्शियस है या ऐसा लग रहा है कि अभी भी टैक्स लीकेज है वहां से या बाकी चीजों पर भी जो खत्म किया गया है ये टीडीएस के लिए जो 10000 का एग्जम्पशन उसके पीछे क्या रीजन है देखिए टीडीएस जो ऑनलाइन गेमिंग पे है अभी प्रत्येक विनिंग के ऊपर में था लेकिन जो ऑनलाइन गेम्स हैं वो कई सारे गेम्स मिलाकर के एक सेशन बनता है एक गेम कोई नहीं खेलता है कई सारे गेम्स जो हैं एक साथ खेलते हैं तो इसलिए जो टीडीएस अब लागू होगा वो समस्त गेम्स पे सामूहिक रूप से जब नेट जो विनिंग होगा जो वो अपने पैसा जो उनका जो एक अकाउंट में से वो निकालेगा तभी उसके ऊपर में देखा जाएगा कि कितना उसने प्रॉफिट कमाया है कितना उसका विनिंग हुआ है उसके ऊपर में टैक्स जो है लगेगा और उसी के ऊपर में टीडीएस भी लगेगा और यदि वो दस हजार रुपए से अधिक है तो टीडीएस पहले लगता था अब वो दस हजार की लिमिट हमने हटा दी तो लिमिट तो हटा दिया है लेकिन ग्रॉस पे लगेगा और नेट पे लगेगा और प्रत्येक विनिंग के ऊपर में नहीं लगेगा ये हमने बदलाव किया है सो टू चेंजेस हैव बीन मेड वन इज दैट 
the taxation will be on the net winnings because in online games generally you play a series of games over days you don't play it you know just one game and you know like you know you would be doing say race horsing would be you know maybe once in a while but this is over a period of time so whatever are the net winnings when you take that money from your account that you have made with the online gaming platform the tax will be on that so this is one change the other change is that the TDS previously was on each winning irrespective of the amount uh, on you know 10,000 and more if the winning is 10,000 and more so some of the online gaming companies were keeping winnings lower than 10,000 say 9,900 99 so that we have removed so there is no now threshold on TDS that is the second change hi ma'am this is Priyashmita from informist media uh, ma'am I wanted to know that there has been an upward revision in the small savings estimates for FY23 However, data suggests that there is a shortfall. So how do you plan to achieve it? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And uh, I mean, it shows a good awareness of our numbers. I'm happy to see people read our you know, deep statement so, uh, with so much attention. It is a good question. What I can say is the market borrowing number is completely firm. That will not change. The remaining numbers have a little bit of fluidity, whether it is small savings, state government provident fund is a very fluid number. See, because if state governments change that number, it affects the overall balance of our uh, you know, funding plans. The market borrowing number is firm. The small savings number is, there is traditionally a seasonality where a lot of small savings comes in the last quarter because people plan their taxes in the month of February and March. So there is usually an upsurge. Will it reach this number or not? You see, these numbers are subject to a number of assumptions. But we are confident that in aggregate, the other sources except market borrowing, the aggregate of them will be close to what we have estimated. And therefore, I don't think this will have any impact on uh, markets. Now, in terms of small savings, again, the date from which these new schemes come into operation is yet to be decided. So there are a number of factors on which the small savings number could fluctuate. But I repeat, it will not affect the market borrowing numbers. I'm, no, she's talking about FY 22, 23 is my impression. Current financial year. Yes, I'm also talking about that. Again, the uh, next year, 14 months before the end of the year, I cannot be firm on next year's numbers, but they are as firm as we can make them 14 months ahead of time. Well, I mean, there has, if there is a shortfall somewhere, there is an increase somewhere else. We have shown you all the numbers as to how we meet the deficit of this year. How is it going to be funded? I, ha I have the statement, you have the statement too, since you've obviously read it, so I don't need to tell you. So that's how we will fund it. So this is a big budget in which something goes up, something goes down. Revenues have gone up, expenditures have gone up, some things have gone down. But in Aggregate, as I said, we are confident of being within our market borrowing numbers. We are confident that the deficit that we have projected for the revised estimate is reasonable and will not be exceeded significantly. It will not be exceeded significantly. Beyond that, I cannot give you a pinpoint. You cannot land a Boeing 747 on a helipad. So, you know, it, it's a huge thing. It, there will be minor, you know, fluctuations here and there. But at a macro level, our numbers are good. I am confident about our numbers. मैम नमस्कार मेरा नाम महावीर सिंह है फ्री लांसिंग करता हूं दो छोटे से स्पष्टीकरण चाहिए थे एक तो सात लाख रुपए तक की आय जो आपने कर मुक्त की है वो दोनों दोनों उसमें हैं पुराना और नया या सिर्फ नए में है ओके और एक आपने घोषणा की कि जो गाड़ियों के स्क्रैप के लिए सरकार कोई सपोर्ट कर रही है उसके पीछे क्या मनसा है सरकार की क्यों इस तरह के उसको बढ़ावा दे रही मंशा यही है कि एनवायरनमेंट के लिए पुराना गाड़ी को हटाना चाहिए मगर वैसे बिना इंसेंटिव हटाना भी मुश्किल है क्योंकि लोगों को लगेगा कि हटाने में से मुझे क्या फायदा है 
सो इंसेंटिवाइज करना उसके लिए for scrapping of vehicles and replacement of vehicles as well what is the kind of outlay uh, that will be there and that we'll see in the coming fiscal i can see there are two parts to it for the central government all central government vehicles that are beyond the 15 year age limit will be scrapped those of them that need to be replaced will be replaced this money is provided for in different departmental budgets because it is not a macro number that is planned centrally the number is significant it exceeds 1000 crores what it exactly is i also don't know i'd have to add it up from several books for state governments we are making this part of the scheme for state capital investment if they need to replace old state government vehicles then that support will come from this scheme and they have to meet certain conditions on meeting the national scrapping policy the aim is to get rid of polluting old vehicles in the government sector namaskar ma'am pramod sharma uh, ma'am uh, pradhan mantri ji ka nara hai ki local for vocal lekin jo uh, online platform hai flipkart aur uh, amazon inke chalte jo chote chote dukandar hai उनका कारोबार प्रभावित हो रहा है तो सरकार की कोई ऐसी योजना है कि फ्लिपकार्ट और अमेजन से भी सरकार को कुछ नहीं मिल रहा है टैक्स जो मिलना चाहिए तो ऐसा कुछ इन पे कुछ लगाने का जो कल फॉर वो लोकल के लिए तो जेम में पोर्टल में एमएसएमई को स्थान मिल रहे हैं वो उनके अपने प्रोडक्ट्स को उनके द्वारा मार्केटिंग आउटरीच करने के लिए गवर्नमेंट ई मार्केट प्लेस प्रोविजन दे रहा है सो so, उनके लिए पॉजिटिव एक्शन है उधर uh precise numbers i don't have at this point of time but uh, the scheme is that if there is an arbitration award which has already happened either of the party either a government department or a government undertaking has challenged it or the contractor has challenged it and that arbitration award is being contested in any court then depending upon the level of the dispute a uh, settlement can be reached between the two parties so as to re reduce the amount of litigation that is exactly what i mean the dated security figure will not change regardless of changes in the other figures that's your second question on the first question of 10 and a half remember there's a difference between an estimate in an economic survey which is given for general guidance and a budget which has to be used to fund expenditure so we have to have numbers which are at a higher level of probability of being exceeded than the economic survey so therefore our number of 10 and a half could come from any combination of inflation and real growth we are expecting nominal growth to be at least 10 and a half percent that's the basis on which the budget is presented now that can come from multiple combinations i cannot tell you that it will be 6 and 4 and a half or will it be 6 and a half and 4 or will it be 7 and 3 and a half or will it be 5 and a half i mean these are all we are reasonably confident that we will exceed 10 and a half percent nominal growth for the purposes of estimating our revenues which is why we use that estimate whatever is stated in the budget speech it is there it is 11.8 it has been stated in the budget speech and i know you have read this statement so it is there 11.8 good afternoon ma'am i am nikun johori from reuters uh, you said that there'll be changes uh, uh, to uh, to improve governance uh, for banks so will there uh, will there also be changes to the bank nationalization act that will uh, enable you to privatize two banks that you had announced earlier and also ma'am uh, is the also uh, is there a concern for the government our markets have fallen the last few days because of decline in adani group stocks so is there that a concern for the government because retail investors have also uh, been impacted uh, uh, significantly because of this 
I had answered that question earlier that the proposed amendments have nothing to do with disinvestment or privatization of the bank. That is a separate chapter. As far as the second question is concerned, uh, we in the government don't comment upon the issues relating with a particular company. ABP Mazhar, Uda Dole, Bagha Neet.